when it comes to processing emotions, there are different expectations for men and women. For women, it's socially acceptable for them to express their feelings like sadness or fear. But for men, well, we're not encouraged to be outwardly expressive about our emotions. And this morning, in our manifestations, we're going to take a look at men and emotion and the importance of becoming vulnerable. I'm not so certain if I am the right person to be a part of this one, because I don't hide my emotion. The amount of time me ball on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the tears are always up on standby. No, <laughs> no, no. I don't hide my emotions at all. Whatever, yeah. however I feel, you can see it right here on my sleeve. Um, I, I don't hide that. But I understand the point because um, if some parents, you can hear them shouting and say, "Yeah, man, you know, if you cry, you're a boy, you yeah. cry, you're a big man. Take care, yeah, foolish is that? No, uh, uh." I remember we, we lost a game early in the season, mm -hmm. very early, and a couple of the kids were crying. Right. And I said to them, I said, well, I'm too look at that. And then it hit me. So when I pulled them together, I said, I'm not suggesting that men mustn't cry. Right. I just don't think it's time for a cry yet, because just the third match we got. <laughs> you know? still have time. So, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I don't know if you understand crying. You know? so I said, no, I have no problem with you crying. But I just turned my child in the first one we lose. I don't know if it's time to cry. But no, I, I, I show my emotions. I, I've never hidden them. Yeah. Never hidden them. Good. Even in front of my kids. Is that something that was encouraged by your parents or your family I, overall? I, I'm not certain, you know, because I left my family as a, as a younger man right. and went, went by myself yeah. you know, for, for the most part. So um, I, I, I can't remember. No, to be honest, I can't remember either way whether I was told that I had to be strong or I was told that you, you, you don't have to be strong. I can't remember that, but it's just some East here. Yeah. So me, me, me ball for, I'll be watching a movie, <laughs> serious. <laughs> You're going to think this is a joke. I'm watching a movie and in the movie there's a dog mm -hmm. and they, they lost the dog. Right. And at the end of the show, they find back the dog. But you know, them do it in slow motion. They see the dog yeah, come, yeah, yeah. and the little boy run to the dog. And me just start ball. <laughs> <laughs> so shaman, so shaman, I laugh after that. But when they see the dog come, and in slow motion, they see the yeah, little boy yeah. run, go meet the dog, and the mother and father behind, and them say, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and me just start Spot ball. Spot is back. <laughs> <laughs> and me just start ball. But see, but sometimes I will even know that I'm going to cry. I say, we can't cry if it's a movie. But it's still up to me for right. some reason. I don't hide my emotions, no. but yeah. I understand what they're saying. Now. According to sbtreatment.com, men hide their emotions. They're saying why men hide their emotions. They said there's no argument that women are more likely to show their emotions. Da, da, da. From an early age, men are conditioned to believe that expressing their feelings is out of character. We said that in the intro. But specifically, men are told that crying in front of other people will threaten their masculinity. Rubbish. rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Complete garbage. Now, apparently they said the solution to this is how men can learn to be vulnerable. Is for men to learn how to become vulnerable and allow themselves to express their emotions freely. However, this is often easier said than done. I can understand that. And it can be difficult for men to feel comfortable showing their emotions, especially if they've been hiding it all along. Yep. So they uh, say there are some ways that you could start becoming more vulnerable to your emotions. Yep. So and the first one is what? They start off saying by being honest about the way you're feeling, and that's super important. It, you can always and should always be honest about the way you feel. Right? Um, to be vulnerable, you need to be honest. Uh, so often men will feel a glimmer of sadness or grief and quickly shut it down. In order to open up about your emotions, you need to accept them and feel them. Recognize the way you're feeling and try to figure out what's making you feel that way. Allow yourself to express those emotions however it feels right. Yep. They also suggest that you could find therapeutic hobbies. I remember seeing my father, he had this fish tank. Mm -hmm. on, on the, the, the veranda yeah. and I'd come in and, and he'd be sitting here and he's just like that and he had this calm serene look he, he, was, he would just look at the, the, the fish and he'd just sit there yeah. and you could see my thing is water in the garden is it? yeah man I water the garden and it, 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 to me it's therapeutic me just kind of catch and me take my time and I cook and or clean well, I clean, I don't cook. Oh, yeah, man. So if you... Would... But cleaning is not necessarily therapeutic for me. Water in the garden is. It's, oh, no, cleaning for me, very therapeutic. And I'll rearrange the entire place. So especially if I'm angry, I sit down and I'll actually take paper. I'll draw out a map of the place. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to put this here, that here, this here, that there. Oh. Yeah, and then go to town 
and cleaning the place and rearranging the no, place. No, no. I mean, I clean my place. I don't, I don't really get angry to be fair, too tough. But I clean my place, but I don't find that therapeutic. But watering yeah. the garden, I you find... You cocktail plants? You know, say... You remember I tell them, they say, I cannot grow... This is true. I cannot grow a weed tree. You know, you're allowed to grow five in your house. I, am, I have a green thumb. Anything I touch, grow, except a weed tree. So I went to this place, one of the... the, the Herb house places, yeah. and they were giving away trees. So I'm telling the Rasta man, say, for some reason I can't do it. And him said, you're reasoning with it? I said, no. You're so I got it. Me get all the name. Herbalos. Herbalos. <laughs> and every day I talk to that, well, that tree week, that dead sea <laughs> <laughs> So as, as much as my reason, I cannot grow a weed tree. What's the positive reasoning? Are you always a stress no, out? No, I'm going to come tree? out and say herbalist, what's going on? You had a good night and thing, and, <laughs> and water up herbalist and stuff. <laughs> and in a tree weeks, herbalist just looks up. <laughs> so, so I will show you some photos of what I did with my living room. Just like probably about a week ago. No, I mean, they move up and down things. But no. they say find therapeutic hobbies yeah. so that, that allow yourself to reflect on your feelings, and it's a great way to tap into your emotions. They said one man who suffered from lifelong depression and anxiety realized that walking his dog always helped him feel better. So he started this organization, Dudes and Dogs, which allows men to get together in nature and have real conversations, something like what we're doing now about yeah. mental health. Yep. They said other examples of therapeutic activities are cooking, no, exercising, me, art, yeah, music, definitely. Yeah. I constantly play music and it, and it helps. Yeah. And I think I told you, and I've said this many times, there's no music that makes me sad. There's no song yeah. that makes I feel sad. Yeah. Whether it lifts it, your spirit. Every single way. song, no matter how it sounds slow, and yeah. it don't make me sad. I mean, if I have to think about um, songs that were played at my brother's funeral, I'm, it still don't make me sad. Wow. End of the road, all them kind of... Any, me, any yeah. kind of tune. Just kind of give you a... Yeah, any kind yeah. of song. I remember Kareen was doing a... Kareen told me one day that she just heard the CD that I would like. Yeah. So I said, oh, you know, I will like it. She said, it sounds sad. This, the music, but, yeah. because I like very slow music, and, yeah. but nothing, not, nothing wow. in music. The final point they make here is see a therapist, and this I am super big on, yep. right? Um, men are less likely to see a therapist than women. Part of that is due to the negative stigma around men and mental health. However, seeing a therapist is one of the best ways in which men can learn to open up about their feelings. Therapy is a safe space for men to be vulnerable without the judgment that everyone else will give. Um, it can also help you to learn uh, how to feel your feelings and cope with your emotions in a more healthy and productive way. And I'm big on this. I will say also that it doesn't have to be like a full-on psychologist. That will help, yes, sure. It could be a counselor, you know. Um, it could be your own doctor. If you have a doctor that you see you yeah. know, on a regular... The important practical. thing about that, guys, in my opinion, is to understand that you need help. Right. And some of us... No, man, we're good, man. Yeah, we'll as, shake it off. Yeah, man, and as much as you, you know, you're, you're limp and you know, feel and you don't look good. You say, you're, everybody say, all right, say, yeah, man, I'm a good man. But if we go back to point one, right. to be honest about the way you're right. feeling, so you go, all right, fine. You know what, I'm going to therapist, I'll shake yeah. it off. Yeah. You've been saying this, but feeling the same way yep. for weeks, yep. for months. Yep. You're not shaking it off, brother, you're not shaking it yep. off. Yep. Straight up. No, I agree with that. So you need to, you, you, you actually need to first understand what's going on in your life. Right. That's the first thing. So you say, oh, my feet, about two weeks, don't be just kind of, you know, maybe we need to talk to somebody. And, and Garth is right. It, I, it can't even be a neighbor. Somebody who you trust. An external party. Yeah, you sit down beside them and them say, well, I'll go on. And they say, shh, you why? Know? What used to happen to me is that, or still does happen to me, people always come to me with all sorts of information, sometimes very much unwanted, right? I'd be in a bar somewhere and a brother would say, yo, hear this. And him just start talk, and he's going off. I'm, and in the moment, I say why, but I understand because yeah. sometimes you just need that kind of outlet. Yeah, man. And, and, space and as someone who coaches youngsters, I get this all the time. That parents who say, "Boy, my son Clive, you can't talk to him for me." And I say, "Well, go on." Why? Yeah, I, I get that every day, and sometimes I'm a little concerned. Not concerned. Sometimes I wonder if I am saying the right things to youngsters because we're all different kinds of parents. Some parent make you 
youth from ten them have a party and their parents have to reach 39 before you can leave the house. Um, so some people parent differently and sometimes I wonder if I'm saying the right thing to this particular young uh, man yeah, because yeah, yeah. what I said theory. to him, yeah. I might have to say something different to the next person even though they are having the same kind of issue. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, to get someone who is trained would be great, but anyone that you can just release your emotions and speak honestly about it and hopefully that person can help. Manifestations That's once it. again, we that, we that. Now it's not every single Wednesday you'll see this because some Wednesdays it will be he said, she said, right. or we said, <laughs> she said, and some well, uh, week, weeks it will be Manversations. What a great name, great name. All right, that's it for this week's Manversations. We're gonna take a break. Can we come back in just a little while?